science. The data and information that comes out of some smartwatches these days, it's a little mind boggling. And one that's caught our attention and we get a lot of questions around is VO2 max. But just how accurate is it? VO2 max by definition refers to the maximum amount of oxygen your body can absorb and use during exercise. And it's generally considered the best indicator of cardiovascular fitness and aerobic endurance. So in theory, the higher that number, the better. Now ordinarily to find out your VO2 max would require a trip to a lab to be tested. But now our watches are supposedly able to do this for us. And recently I spotted this on my own Coros watch, which naturally got me wondering, how does that number compare to that of the lab. Well, it's time to find out. Now you'll see that I'm wearing a mask for this. This is because VO2 max is a measure in milliliters of oxygen consumed per kilogram of body weight per minute. Sounds complicated, but actually by wearing the mask, they just capture all the gases and the computer does the rest. The protocol for a VO2 max test is typically some sort of step test where the pace or power gradually increases in steps. Today I'm starting at 15 kilometers an hour and increasing by 0.3 of a kilometer every 20 seconds until failure. Ouch. So what Mark's doing today is a VO2 max test. We're using a protocol that we might describe as a kind of fast ramp test. So it'll start reasonably quickly and then just gradually get quicker up to the point where Mark can't do any more. A couple of minutes down already, it's good. We'll be recording his oxygen consumption and we'll get his VO2 max from that. Um, there are different protocols you might use for these sort of tests. So you can do a slightly more elongated test where you take lots of lactate samples and heart rates and then you can maybe get a little bit more definition on the training zones. But for today, we're just looking at kind of that VO2 max test and that peak VO2 score that we'll record. Perfect, brilliant. Oh, I've forgotten how disgusting these are. Now, we've been really lucky getting into the University of Team Bath Sports Science Lab today and them actually running the test for us, which has been really cool. And in fairness, actually, lab tests have become far more accessible in recent years. However, it is still going to cost you money. And also, not to mention that Doing the test, you're probably gonna to need to factor in a couple of easier days beforehand in your training. And then you've got the test itself, recovery after, and not to mention also finding a lab that you've got to get yourself to fitting that all in around busy lives. So in theory, it would be amazing if our watches could actually calculate this for us from our ordinary training. Well, it's time to find out. I've got to say, I'm actually really excited for these results. Now the way in which Coros works and many other devices work is, they basically collect data every time that you run or you exercise. But obviously the more accurate that data, such as wearing a heart rate monitor on your chest or on your arm, the better. And then essentially, it creates a profile from that data. With Coros, for example, I can go into their Evo lab within the training hub and I can see that it has not only estimated a VO2 max for me, but also my running fitness, efficiency, threshold, pace, heart rate, and so on. Now, I could have just left it at that, but I wanted to give this the best chance possible. And actually within my device, it's got its own inbuilt running fitness test. So I did that. 30 minutes of hard running on the canal. And it turns out I didn't really need to do it because it didn't change the result at all. It was perfectly accurate before. And that was 61 for my estimated VO2 max. Now for the lab results. Drum roll, please. 63. 0.5. So there we go. That's pretty close. Okay, not bang on the exact same, but definitely in the same ballpark, very close in my opinion. And I kind of have a bit of a theory for this. And obviously the watch can only predict the VO2 based on the data that you're giving it. And I'm gonna be very honest, put my hands up here. I've done very little running lately. I'm probably not giving the watch its best chance. So it's done pretty well considering. And also I guess I've kind of got a unique position here and the fact that I was an elite professional triathlete before, did countless hours of training in the past, I've kind of got that under my belt and that gives me a bit of a base that allows me to suddenly off very little training 
knock out quite impressive performances considering the training. So I think that may come to account too. Now, just a little point on VO2 max. It isn't something that you should be looking at on a daily basis, comparing from one day to the next. And also, it isn't something you should be comparing with someone else. Now, VO2 max is very much a personal thing and it's something you should monitor over a long period of time to see whether perhaps your training method that you're using at the time is working or not working. Don't just expect one big almighty session to suddenly boost your VO2 max up. That's not how it works. In summary though, I am very impressed at how close the VO2 max was, all things considered. And I have heard from friends that have also done similar, how close they have found theirs to be. So considering you haven't necessarily had to go out and do anything special, it's just collecting all that data on your wrist on a daily basis and churning this number out, I am living impressed. And also, just the information you get from that on the back end and the training software, in particular Coros with their Evo Lab, uh, the training hub is very, very impressive. Um, this not to say as well that the lab is dead and it's done for, because actually the expertise that you can get from a sports physiologist like we have Jonathan at Team Bath is invaluable. They can really decipher all that information for you and they can take things to another level with the lactate testing, finding out your LT1, LT2. I um, don't believe you can get that from your watch yet. So um, I definitely would still go to a lab if I'm after that kind of detail, but on a daily basis, very impressed. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you would like us to explore any other things like this, I mean, get us in the lab testing Crocs against Super Shoes. I don't know. Let us know in the comment section down below and we'll try and make them happen. If you enjoyed today's video, as I say, give it a thumbs up, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe.